but we are here at Let's Explain. Um, I'm Natasha Fisser and we have Nelson Beltajar here. Now I'm live from South Africa and Nelson, you are all the way from Canada. Yes, that's correct, Natasha. I'm coming to you live from Toronto, Canada. Wow, it's an honor to have you here today. And I hear it's Canada Day there for, uh, for you guys. You know what? You're absolutely right. The entire country is relaxing and celebrating. And I'm here working. Why not? <laughs> Why not? Well, I'm honored that you're here with me today. So uh, I'm just, I want to announce you so that people know who you are. You are a very special person. So uh, for me, uh, you inspire me with your, um, with your testimony. I want to thank you for being with me today. But let me just let so that the people know who you are. So Nelson is an entertaining international motivation and educational speaker. He's a certified life and executive business coach. He's a physical therapist and the author of an accidentally global impact blog, thepositivedrip.com. Now, I like the way you say accidentally. <laughs> we will let you explain that to us as we go uh, um, and listen to your story. Um, but I want to say why I want you here today is uh, when I first used to uh, speak publicly, uh, you have so authentically said, I'm an ambassador for Christ. And we don't hear that so much these days, even between Christian pastors and public speakers and stuff. And I want to honor you for doing that. And I, we, I, that's why I want to hear your story. <laughs> and let the people uh, that um, listen on Facebook Live now or on YouTube later to hear your testimony and to hear how you are ambassador for Christ. And I love that. And I want to thank you for being here. Oh, well, Natasha, the, the honor is, is all mine. And, and I just want to say hello to your viewers. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Yes, I am Nelson Beltijar from Toronto, Canada. And today is a great day to be above ground, I tell you. <laughs> and you'll understand why I say that. And to you and your audience and the entire planet, I want you to know that I am an imperfect soldier for Christ. And if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be here today. And since you're going to let me stay for a few more minutes, I just want you to know that I'm, I am just a proud son of a, of a man, of a mom and a dad who took a chance on themselves and chased a dream, left their homeland, the Philippines, to come to Canada to create a better life for themselves and their unborn children, myself and my sister. And because of them, I get to live out my goals and dreams. My dad just passed away December 16, 2020. That's him behind me in the picture, but I'm sure he's with us in spirit. And I can't wait. I cannot wait to share these few minutes with you, Natasha. <laughs> Thank you, Nelson. Sure. So um, uh, you've got an incredible story. I'm sorry to hear about your dad. Um, and it's an honor to see him there in the background. Wow. Okay. Thanks for sharing that. So um, uh, I always tell to young children now, you know, let's explain. It's all about talking to kids and parents about sex. And um, I'm actually a pastoral counselor. So uh, the, we have something in common and that's Christ. And when I talk to children about sex and stuff, I always tell them, you need to go to tell a story one day. And you're going to tell the story about your relationships and your experiences and how, how do you want that story to be? Now, I know that's not in line with your story. It's nothing about sex, but it's a beautiful testimony uh, of, of your journey of life. And people are going to want to hear your story. And maybe they also going to have stories in their life that we don't plan to have. You know, we don't plan these things. And I want to ask you to share your story and uh, how did you come to be to uh, where you are today? If you want, want to start there. Well, again, thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. <clears throat> and, for, and for your audience, chances are there's nothing new you're going to hear me say today. But maybe this conversation with Natasha and I, will, it'll tickle your ear and it'll make these, these few minutes memorable for you. Now, let's see, where should I start? There's this word called adversity. Adversity, a word that no human being on this planet can escape. Agreed? Yes, yes. And I'm wondering if there's anyone out there who has ever, ever had life hand you something that you didn't expect. And if you did, I'm talking to you on the other side of the camera. You see, I was lucky enough to climb that mountain of ambition and success, get to the top, enjoy the view for a while, 
only to come crashing down, spiraling down, losing everything that I'd ever worked for in a blink of an eye. Humbling, so, so humbling. Like Natasha said, you know, I was lucky enough to build a thriving physical therapy practice that specialized in injury assessment, treatment, and rehabilitation. Thriving, thriving physical therapy practice. And I'll never forget this. It was May 2016, and we were on the second floor of my studio loft, my, my staff and I. And we were celebrating, clanging those champagne glasses, clanging those champagne glasses, because, you know, which were secretly filled with Diet Coke <laughs> because we were at work. Celebrating because we had reached a monumental goal. You know, we were living the dream. We were on cloud nine. It was amazing. And then 168 hours after that special joyous moment in time, I was shockingly diagnosed with cancer. And I was forced to live in the hospital immediately for supervision, evaluation, and chemotherapy treatments. And to add salt to the wound, I even lost my ability to walk. And I became a prisoner in a wheelchair for the next three years. And the reason I share this story with you is, again, to remind you that adversity, adversity will attack you anytime it wants, regardless of your age, your gender, your status, your religion. And when it does come, there are only two outcomes. Either you find a way to conquer it or you crumble beneath it. As crazy as that, that chapter I just shared with you is, that's the easy part of my journey. Actually, lean in, Natasha. I want to share this with you. Yes. <laughs> For the years of 2016, 2017, I was forced to live in five, five different hospitals, five, because it wasn't safe for me to live at home for treatment. And my very, very first cancer doctor, let's call him Dr. K, Dr. K, my very first cancer doctor gave up on me and told my family and myself that I was terminal and there was nothing he or the hospital could do for me. And the best he could do was put me into the palliative care unit so that way I could be comfortable and pain-free in my remaining days. When I heard that, Natasha, it was like a sword had swooped and cut me right at the knees. And I'll never forget this. I, I wallowed in self-pity for about 10 minutes. And then I promised myself, if I am going to die, if I am going to die, I'm going out in a bang, and I'm going to chase one more undying goal, one more undying goal. I just didn't know what that was yet. <laughs> and then one day I was just lying in that hospital bed, and I realized, you know what? Instead of writing my goodbye letters, I'm going to write a blog. A blog. I know you're wondering a blog, but not for vanity reasons, not at all. You see, at that moment in time, I had a six-year-old nephew, two nieces, five and three years old. Two brand new born twins who I love dearly, but it broke my heart to know that I wasn't going to get a chance to see them. Can you hear me now? Yes, you're back. Yes, yes. Okay. And, you know, after that brief intermission, I'd like to welcome the viewers back. <laughs> welcome back, everybody. <laughs> welcome back, everybody, from a word from our sponsor. Anyways, as I was saying, Dr. K had told me that I was terminal and I was going to die and there was nothing he could do about it. So my goal was to create that blog. Like I said, I had a six-year-old nephew, two nieces, five and three years old, two brand new born twins, which... I knew I wasn't going to get a chance to see grow up. So I decided to write this blog. This blog housed my, my, my thoughts, my dreams, my words that I would have had as far as if I would have conversations with them. You know, and the reason I had written this blog, like I said, it wasn't for vanity reasons. It's because I wanted to leave it behind for them. So that way I could still, so that way I could still be a part of their lives after I had passed away. But you want to hear something funny? It looks like the joke's on me. Yo, Let's don't... fast forward. Let's fast forward to September 2018. One, I'm with my brand new cancer doctors. I left, doc, doc, I left Dr. K in the rearview mirror as fast as possible. And my brand new cancer doctors at a different hospital fought for me, did everything they could to help me win. And guess what? They stamped me cancer-free on September 28th. 
2018 and told me to go live my life. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Wow. And two, that blog that you and I are talking about, thepositivedrip.com, which I had left behind specifically for my younger family members, yeah. has accidentally, accidentally trickled across the planet and developed a global readership, which was never the plan. Never, never the plan. And three, an online community is walking alongside that blog. You know, it is so humbling to see that people actually want to hear what I have to say. But I think it's the fact that I have shared with them what it was like to feel inadequate, insignificant, alone, lonely, scared, unsure, and lost while I was in that hospital. And I think these are words that resonate with a lot of people on the planet. And the reason why I share this story with you is it, it's not to brag. It's to show you how adversity, adversity introduced me to a more stronger, more resilient me. How adversity opened my mind to the, the possibility of not faltering, but continuing to fight. Adversity inspired that one last undying goal to create that love-filled blog for my younger family members. And adversity even, even opened up my mind to the possibilities of what I could do in my perceived remaining days instead of shutting my brain off. And instead of me lying in that hospital bed waiting for the coffin to arrive, I wrote that blog. And because of that blog, here I am today. I get to share a few minutes with you. You get to hear my voice. You get to see my face, even though everyone tells me that I have a face for radio. <laughs> I get to share a few minutes with you. That's my story. And uh, here we are today. There's more, but I'm sure you'll pull that out of me. Yes. Wow, so are you, it sounds like you are almost grateful for your adversary that you, that, <laughs> can we say that? It, you know what, it, it's funny how you say that because, you know, when we look at life backwards, mm -hmm. it is so much easier to understand why these bumps in the road showed up, why you were forced to go right instead of left, mm -hmm. as opposed to having to live it forward and and not knowing what's going on. Hence the sentence, faith untested can't be trusted. So yeah. when you say that I'm grateful, I'm grateful to be alive. I'm grateful to have won my battle. And most importantly, I am grateful to decide to not let that trial and tribulation of mine be in vain by continuing to share my story of vulnerability, challenge, and victory. Because why? Because every single person on the planet has a story. Every single person. And I urge you to share your story because it's your story which might help pull someone out of <laughs> a current hole that they're stuck in. And I want you to believe that. And that's what I'm going to do with the remaining days that I have on earth. As far as grateful goes, when I was caught in the middle of it, absolutely not grateful. I was wondering why I was in there. But I'm grateful to come through the fire, come out the other end be victorious and share to the people that it's possible to overcome adversity. Will it be easy? Absolutely not, but it's still possible. So tell me a little bit about the, the, your hardest time. Okay, now we're glad you're here now, but tell me about that dark hours in, your, in the hospital bed. What was your experience? Why God, why me? Maybe I, I hear a lot of that uh, in my counseling center, but what was your thoughts there when it was so hard? Oh, Natasha, that's a, that's a great question. Can I answer that with a, with a story that'll help lead up to my answer? Yes, please, please. <laughs> First of all, I thank you for allowing me to use the word God on your show and use the word Jesus Christ on your show. Thank you very much. And I'm talking to you out there on the other side of this camera. Have you ever felt lost, alone, heartbroken, dejected, hurt, and wondered, God, where are you? Where are you? Well, I know how you feel. I felt the same way once. In my very, very first hospital, like I told you, the charts said that I was on the way out. I was terminal, and there was no chance for me to win. And I'll never forget this. It was a Friday night at around 7 p.m. I was staring out the window and I said to myself or out loud, God, where are you? Where are you? I'm praying for you. Where are you? You know what I do with my life. You know how I use my minutes. 
Why did you put me here? Where are you? I'm not going to lie. I was, I was angry. I was lost. I was scared. I was terrified. I was afraid I was going to die. And I'm calling out for my Lord. Where are you? And then at that moment in time, it was a shift change with the nurses. My day nurse was fantastic. She was great. And then she introduced me to my evening nurse, who was a little rough around the edges. And then that nurse had come back to do my vital signs. And instead of being, you know how nurses have a beautiful bedside manner. This one just probably didn't feel like coming to work that day. She came to me. She goes, I'm here to take your vital signs. And I said, okay, how are you? Arm, please. Arm, please. Okay. How are you? I'm really busy. Can I have your arm, please? So she takes my vital signs. And remember, faith untested can't be trusted. So without a word of a lie, in this year, as she was taking my blood pressure, as jovial as she was, I heard, ask her to pray for you. I heard that and I went, no chance. I know what I heard. I know, you know, I know what I heard. I heard it in my ear. I said, no chance. So she leaves. And it's just me in my room and my clock. She comes back at 11 o'clock to give me my medicine. And all the other nurses know that I can't swallow these pills because they're gigantic and I choke. So she comes in at 11 o'clock to give me my medicine. And I say, hi, you know, I'm sorry to bother you, but can I get some ice cream or yogurt because they give it to me so I can swallow this or else I'll choke. And then again, she says, oh, I have a busy day. I'll do what I can. I can't promise it. So I said, okay, thank you. And as she's walking out the hospital, as she's walking out my, my hospital room door, guess what I hear in this ear again? Ask her to pray for you. And again, no chance, no chance. She leaves and I'm just sitting there. until now it's 11.05 PM. No, no ice cream, no pudding, nothing. I'm looking at my, my horse pills that are, that are my medicine. She does come back. She goes, here you go. I got you chocolate pudding. I said, thank you. Before I could say thank you, she was out the door. Okay. So I'm going, God, where are you? My day has just gone from, from bad to worse. Where are you? So now it's 3 a.m. And remember, I can't walk. I can't stand. I can't go to the washroom by myself. So I have to page the nurse to come so I can pee into the urinal. So I'm about to press. It's 3 a.m. I go, please, please, any nurse but her, any nurse. <clears throat> I press the button. Someone walks into my room and politely says, what do you want now? Oh, no. Same nurse. <laughs> Same nurse. How, how lucky can one guy be? So I said, look, you know my file. I can't walk. I can't go to the washroom. I need to pee. Then she asked, well, what does that have to do with me? meaning her. I said, I need you to bring the urinal to the bed. I need to stand and I need to pee. And that's how we do it. So she grumbles over, she grabs the urinal. There I am in my most humble position, standing by the bed, taking care of business. And guess what I hear in this right ear again? Wow. Guess. <laughs> Will you pray, pray, ask her to pray for you? Ask her to pray for you. Wow. So I finally say, look, we just met at seven o'clock. We may never see each other again. You've seen my file. I'm terminal. I'm going to die. Can I ask you a question? She goes, sure. What is it? Can you pray for me? And she looked at me like this. And as soon as I said, can you pray for me? Everything changed. And her face just lit up. Her body posture changed. I finished doing what I had to do. She says, come lie in the bed. I lie in the bed. She puts her right hand on my forehead, her left hand on my feet. And she prays in the name of Jesus Christ, heal this young man, heal him. He has more to do. Don't let him die, regardless of what the, what the charts say. And then she left. But before she left, she goes, my shift changes at 730 but I'll come back to check on you at seven o'clock. Okay. And then she leaves and I'm lying there wondering what just happened. 
So it's 3 a.m. I'm exhausted. I fall back asleep. And then around 6 a.m., maybe 6, 11 a.m., my body just wakes up. And all of a sudden, this is what happened, Natasha. <gasps> and then I realized, oh, my gosh, the nurse is your messenger. That's how you let me know that you've been with me the whole time. But I was starting to laugh in bed. I said, of all the messengers in the world, why did, why did you pick her? But then I know why. Because I had to listen to the whisper three times. My faith was tested. Faith untested can't be trusted. My faith was tested. So I, I took that step, that leap of faith, and finally asked her to pray for me. And she miraculously changed in front of me from that non-jovial nurse that I met at 7 o'clock to this elated, glowing human being at 3 a.m. in the morning. And I realized, okay, God, you're with me. You're with me. I will never doubt again. Wow. And for those of you out there that feels God is silent and you can't hear him, I want you to know he's there. He'll somehow let you know. I don't know how, but I want you to remember my story. And remember this, faith untested can't be trusted. And that's a story which I will forever keep sharing because I know there are people out there lost, hurt, <laughs> have heartache, maybe on their last rope wanting to not see tomorrow. But for those of you that have tried everything else and nothing seemed to work to pull you out of your current hole, maybe invite God or Jesus into your life. And you never know. In the end, something will either happen, you'll be right or you'll be wrong. But that's what I did. You might not agree with it, but that's my story. And it's unbelievable, but it happened. I'm here. I'm alive. I get to stay. And I will forever share that story with anyone who's willing to listen. <laughs> Incredible story, wow. Now, I I'm curious. Now, I know when uh, sometimes God um, heals people immediately just there, and sometimes they walk a journey to healing. So what was your journey after that? Were you instantly healed, or were you, did you have a journey to healing? What was? Oh your... my gosh, that was in June 2016. Huh? So remember, I couldn't walk. Everybody thought I was terminal. And then all of a sudden, June 2016, everything looked really, really bad and really, really, really dark for me. And I'll share one more story. Has anybody ever, ever had that irk, that irky tingling in the back of your neck that something bad is around you or something bad is about to happen? If there's anyone out there, I'm talking to you. I felt that one night. I was lying on my left side. And I felt this. You know when you have somebody right in front of your face and you can feel them in your face? Yeah. I yeah. felt this energy right in front of my face on a Saturday evening. But it was, it was an ugly, evil kind of feeling. Or it was a bad feeling. And I remember saying to it, not yet, go away. Not yet. Go away. And it went from here, this feeling. I honestly felt it start to reverse away from me. And you felt this energy just get further and further away from me. And it, I felt it go towards the door of my hospital room. And then it disappeared. And I honestly believe that since I was suffering so much, death might have came to visit me that night and say, look, you've had enough, Nelson. Let me take you now. But I was stubborn enough and foolish enough to believe in the impossible. And I still wanted to stay. I told it to go away. And thank God I did. Because the following week, the following week on a Tuesday, my doctors had come running in and said, everything we've done isn't working. Your tumor markers are going through the roof. Nothing's working. However, there's something we must have done last week. Because for the first time, we've seen your tumor markers start to drop. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, things started to drop. And the chemotherapy was working. Everything was starting to work. If I had taken that invitation to leave the planet that Saturday night, 
I would have never been able to know that now I'm in a position to win the following Tuesday. And it's funny, we are all a product of, of, of our choices. And I was stubborn enough to say, I'm willing to go through this pain. I don't want to leave yet. And I made a deal with God. I said, God, I'll go through this. I'll go through it, but just, but, but just leave my friends and family alone. I'll go through this, but leave my friends and family alone. I remember making that deal out loud. And, you know, I honestly believe that it's a test. It was a trial and tribulation to test, to see where I was regarding my faith. Who knows? Maybe there's something down the road. We know the world's upside down. Who knows? Maybe it was just a test to prepare me for what's to come next. To say, okay, you know what? Maybe, maybe I'll trust you with something down the road. Maybe. You know, and it went from 2016 to 2017. I was still battling the cancer. With, with, the, with the chemotherapy. And then all of a sudden in 2018, remember, I still couldn't walk. I was doing physical therapy every single day for 365 days of 2018, where I had to learn to walk. I fell down a lot, but I got back up a lot. I fell down a lot, but I got back up a lot. You know, and the truth is, I really desperately, I wanted to keep winning. I wanted to stay alive. And I graduated, I graduated from a wheelchair to a walker, to two canes, to one cane. And eventually on January 3rd, 2021, I took my cane and I put it in the closet forever, forever, forever. Because I'm now walking upright on my own again. But that's not even the best part. A friend of mine who's my accountability coach, AndreaMasons.com, she gave me a challenge and said, why wait till December 31st to run? Hmm. Aim for June 1st. I said, oh my gosh, that's crazy. So again, I'm foolish enough to believe the impossible. And I did it. I trained. And on June 1st, there's a video that I've shared up on my YouTube channel, The Positive Drip. You'll see that I've graduated from that wheelchair. And I ran down the street on June 1st, 2021. Wow. After, after all that time. I was a prisoner of a wheelchair for at least 2,000 consecutive days. And again, faith untested can't be trusted. I refused to go down. If I was going to die, I was going down fighting. But for some reason, God said, I'm going to let you stay. You're not done yet. <laughs> Apparently, I'm not done yet. Wow, it is such an inspiring story, and I uh, uh, thank you for sharing also the hard part. Even when you know God's there, still sometimes, and most of the times, like you say, adversary, we still need to walk that journey of healing, and that, that's also a, 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 a makes you stronger, give you character. Uh, how would you explain that journey? Because it's a hard journey. It, it doesn't sound like it was easy. <laughs> that is. There were so many times I could have easily said, I'm done. Take me now. But like I said, I, I had a loving mom, a loving dad. I had friends, my niece, my nephews. And I wanted to see them live. You know, Natasha, I need to let you know that, you know, I'm a product of every single friendship, relationship, and acquaintanceship, good or bad, that I've ever had. And I did not get to where I am all by myself today. I had friends, family, people bleed for me, give me their time when it was uncomfortable for them to help put me in a position to win. And again, if not for them, I wouldn't be here today. So again, I, you see me in front of the camera, but there were a lot of heroes that got me to where I am today. Yes, yes, I know that. I definitely know. I, I sort of also have a story, or sort of, I have also an experience also a near-death experience. I also, and without my family, I wouldn't have made it, but we'll keep that for another day. Um, but one thing that I uh, want to add what you said is God doesn't always answer us the way we want him to answer us. Like you said, where are you, God? Or why, why this happens? Or why I'm alone? And why this nurse? Um, and or why must it take so long for the healing process? Why is it not immediate? I want to inspire people to, to listen to God 
Uh, he, he's like you say, I, you were third, you tasted <laughs> third time you answered. Sometimes, and most of the times, he doesn't answer the way we want him to answer us, and that's sometimes hard. But he's always a good father. He's a good, good father because he knows best for us. And sometimes he, he say not yet. <laughs> and um, I experienced that in my journey as well. We'll keep that, like I said, for another time. But uh, it's inspiring to hear it from you as well to say you needed to walk that journey of healing and character and see that your family can support you. I must say, without family and friends, uh, none of us can be here in today's uh, in today's hard life. It is hard to go through this this journey. So um, Nelson, I'm going to put that link in the YouTube link so that the people can go and see on your YouTube channel uh, where you run. I want to see that. <laughs> you know what? Yes, my, my website, if you want to come visit it, is www.thepositivedrip.com. And my YouTube channel is The Positive Drip. And for those of you that have a few minutes to spare and you're drinking your favorite drink, come visit, come watch, come listen come read and hopefully I can entertain you for a little bit and distract you from the uh, the craziness of your day. Yes. <laughs> well, it's always fun talking to you, Nelson. You're so entertaining. And I want to thank you for what you do for, uh, for a living, for sharing your message to be brave enough to write that blog when you were, uh, when you were that starting out and it's inspiring to hear your story and keep being an ambassador for Christ. Uh, I think <laughs> that is the most powerful statement I enjoy from you. And um, we're here to make a difference. And, yes. I and, be, and be, before I go, before I go, I just want to say to you, I applaud you for what you are doing and how you are using your precious minutes of life while you're on this planet. And I thank you so much for letting me be a part of your podcast and your life's mission. Yeah, thanks so much. I'm honored. And let's leave uh, the world a better place, like you say, leave it a better place than what we've been in here uh, before it has been. Be, we've been here. Uh, I messed it up. <laughs> but let's leave uh, the world a better place. And thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Go enjoy your day off now. And I, I hope to speak to you soon again. We'll stay connected. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Goodbye. It's